Hello, Pokemon trainers. Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Battle Stadium singles video here on iStarly TV. This is, of course, part of my Road to Master series where I try to climb the online ranked Battle Stadium singles ladder. And today we have a new team that I've made. I've been testing with this team and I like it quite a bit and we're gonna talk through it. Of course, the main Pokemon we're featuring here is the Blood Moon Ursa Luna, which I think is a, an awesome Pokemon design-wise. The way it looks and also like it's it's in-game design like how it plays and also it's just a really fun pokemon like I, I just think it's great but that's kind of the core that's kind of the pokemon i started with and we'll kind of go through everything else um i mean you know i i, I apologize that i always end up doing this but like i'm just gonna go like completely out of order here on the team because i'm gonna try to talk through my process of like kind of how i built the team i'll try to make it as quick as possible but uh there's the team code if you want to try it out yourself so we started with blood moon ursa luna and i just realized this is a pokemon that's in a pretty good spot in the meta i'm running max hp and max special attack with an assault vest and a modest nature so we've got blood moon earth power hyper voice and then vacuum wave for its moves, you know, the last two moves could be Moon Blast and or Focus Blast, and it does have a lot of other options you could try, especially, I mean, if you're running Assault Vest, obviously you're limited, but I settled on this moveset, you know, Blood Moon is a really strong move, and with Ursa Luna's ability Mind's Eye, it ignores typing, basically, so it hits Ghost Types. And Hyper Voice is a lot less powerful, but it's still decently powerful. So Blood Moon, of course, is like Gigaton Hammer from Tinkaton, where you can only use it, or sorry, you cannot use it twice in a row. So I wanted another good normal type move to kind of switch to if I needed to. And then Vacuum Wave is actually really good because Ursuluna is really slow. So it gives me a way to kind of pick off slower things. I originally had Focus Blast, and then I switched it to Moon Blast. Focus Blast was, you know, for coverage, and then Moon Blast, I was like, oh, well, Moon Blast hits Chen Pao super effectively as well. But then I realized we get Vacuum Wave, and that's probably just straight up better because we can pick off weakened threats, and it's still really good against Chen Pao. It really threatens Chen Pao as well, so I settled on that. And we've got Terra Normal just to hit extra hard with the normal type moves, and of course, it removes our ground typing so that we're not weak to water or ice anymore, which are pretty common types these days. And... Yeah, I mean, this Pokemon is great. It, it hits really hard, and it's really bulky. Like, with Assault Vest, it's pretty well-rounded from its defensive stats, and it can take hits from most everything. So, good Pokemon, and I'm really excited to try it out. From there, one Pokemon that I've been looking, because I've been browsing Smogon, and they have a lot of sets and, and cores that are pretty good. One core that they had for that they had up there for a while was the... Lead Dragapult with Landorus, like bulk up Landorus, but I'm, I'm basically using that theory with this Lead Dragapult without using the Landorus myself. So the Dragapult, let's go to Dragapult now, it's number two up there. Um, this is the Pokemon that I typically will want to lead with, and it's an interesting set, you know, I think Dragapult's a really versatile Pokemon, and it's a Pokemon that doesn't get that much love, but it is still pretty much the fastest Pokemon in the meta, so... Um, I think it, it deserves a lot more attention, but this one has Focus Sash, and the goal is to burn or paralyze whatever we're in against, and what that does is it pretty much helps us set up for our other Pokemon. So for example, if, we, if we're against a physical attacker, we can Will-O-Wisp them and burn them, which basically shuts them down completely, and then later on we could go into one of our Sweepers, or we could go into Ursa Luna, or Dragonite, or Gyarados, and the Pokemon that is burned is really not much of a threat anymore, so we can kind of freely set up at that point. Um, same thing with Th Thunder Wave. Basically, Thunder Wave is there for Pokemon that we either don't want to burn or can't burn, and so paralyzing them, of course, is really good because it makes them really slow and it makes them possibly miss their moves. So, you know, again, same thing. We Thunder Wave something, and then we can go into one of our good Pokemon and just kind of take over the game from there. Of course, we have Hex then, which is really good... Once the opponent is burned or paralyzed, it does double damage, which I believe makes it like a 130 base power move, correct me if I'm wrong, which is pretty insane. And then finally Draco Meteor just as a really strong way to, you know, get off extra damage and has decent coverage with Hex. So I love Dragapult, it's one of my favorite Gen 8 Pokemon, um, and I'm excited to use it any chance I get. If you remember in the earlier stages of Scarlet and Violet Battle Stadium singles, I had Dragapult on like almost every one of my teams because uh, it was really good at the time. And we're bringing it back. 
From there, we're gonna quickly go through the number one, three, and four on the team there. Um, these are my setup sweepers, you know, Dragonite, doesn't really need much explanation. I do have a somewhat unique EV spread, so I'll put that in the Pokey Paste in the description if you wanna see all of these Pokemon's EV spreads. But Dragonite, I'm running Max Attack Adamant with enough speed to outspeed like fast threats after two Dragon Dances. But again, with extreme speed, I felt like that kind of doesn't matter. Like, you know, we can pick off uh, faster things anyway. And and if they are paralyzed thanks to Dragapult, we have an easier time. So bulky Dragonite with max HP or almost max HP and then max attack. And then we have Gyarados with another unique EV spread. It'll outspeed Fluttermane and Chen Pao after a Dragon Dance. We've got Terra flying to round out our coverage. And I, I, I mainly picked Gyarados as something of a Ogre Pond counter. Like Dragon, it's already pretty decent against Ogre Pond, but I think a lot of Ogre Ponds these days are running play rough. And so Gyarados is just really good against Ogre Pond, particularly the fire and even the water ones. Um, fire is the most common Ogre Pond. So the ability to intimidate it, resist pretty much its most important moves, and then potentially set up and then kill it with a Terra Blast, I thought would be really good for us. Then we have Goldango, or sorry, I was gonna talk about Corviknight. Uh, Corviknight, my usual Corviknight set, you know, really no explanation needed. Max HP, max defense, iron defense, body press, just go from there. And then finally, we've got Goldango, which is also a really unique EV spread. I think I got it from Smogon as well, so um, I honestly don't know exactly what the EVs are for. There's a little bit of speed investment, a little bit of bulk, a lot of special attack, though not max. And the goal, of course, is to, once again, go in on something that is burned or paralyzed and just maybe set up nasty plots, do a lot of damage. And we've got Terra Flying. Terra Flying makes Goldango kind of a perfect answer to Gliscor. Gliscor is a Pokemon that's very common now, and it's a really good one. And if you're not prepared for it, it's one of those things where if you have a Pokemon that's really good, there, there are some Pokemon that completely like shut down Gliscor because it typically runs Protect, Substitute, Toxic, and Earthquake. So if you have like something like Corviknight or Goldango, it can't do anything to you, but there are certain cases where Gliscor can just completely take over a game if you're unprepared for it because it just doesn't die, it, it recovers health every turn, it takes hits really well, it gets behind a substitute, and then it can just use Earthquake to, to and Toxic to kind of uh, destroy Pokemon. So Gliscor is really annoying, so if you'll notice, I have two Pokemon on my team that can kind of completely wall Gliscor. Um, but Goldango is pretty good against other things as well. So that's the team right there. We're going to see how it goes. I think this team has a lot of potential, though I do recognize that we've got a lot of slow Pokemon, so we got to keep that in mind. Dragapult's super fast, so our goal with Dragapult, of course, is going to be to paralyze stuff. So there's the team code. If you want to try it out, let's get to a couple games. Game number one, my opponent's team, you know, they they love them some good Pokemon. <laughs> Anyways, do I want to lead with Dragapult? Dragapult's my typical lead here, of course. And of course, I like Dragapult here. It actually looks really strong here. However, my opponent has Ting Lu and they also have Breloom. So I don't think I like that. Although we have Goldengo, which might scare off Breloom by itself. Um, the thing is, Goldengo's not amazing against like ev every anything else on their team, sadly. I think Dragapult's okay. Like I don't like it against Ting Lu because it's really hard to take Ting Lu down. But if I burn it, I mean, if I burn it, that's really not that great. I could lead Gyarados, but if they lead Breloom, that's a problem. I just don't like that Spore. I think I could still lead Gyarados and then bring Goldango in the back, but then it feels like we're just bringing too many Pokemon just for one Pokemon. Goldango's okay here, it's not great. I, I actually don't love it, to be quite honest. Um, for my last Pokemon, I might, this is gonna sound weird, but it's possible I bring, I bring Dragapult in the back, because it can possibly help me against Fluttermane and Iron Bundle. Yeah, I'm gonna bring Dragapult. I think I like it better just because I like it better than bringing Ursaluna here. Because if I bring Ursaluna, it feels like I'm bringing too many Pokemon that are just kind of slow. And I feel like that could really hurt me later on. So I'm leading Gyarados here, expecting them to lead with Tinglu. But if they lead with if they lead with Breloom, that's also decent for me. They lead with their Iron Bundle, which is another was another option for sure that they could have done. Um, I didn't consider it quite as heavily, but this is actually really bad for me. Well, I guess I can just go Goldango here, which is 
Not something I'm super happy about, don't get me wrong, but they get their booster energy. It's funny that their their iron bundle has the gourmet mark, which is which my iron bundle, my shiny iron bundle also has. Um, I know it kind of has nothing to do with bundle, but like it's kind of cute having it be called the gourmet. So maybe they're a fan of the channel. Maybe they they've been watching my videos and and they thought they wanted to be they wanted their iron bundle to be like mine, but <laughs> let's go into Goldango here. Um, I hope they go freeze dry. I think they should because it would be four times super effective against Gyarados. And we take that. And we take that all right. I'm just gonna go ahead and fire off a Shadow Ball here because it's pretty good against like all of their Pokemon. So if they switch, um, and of course if I go make it rain, we get a special attack drop. So they go Hydro Pump now, which does a lot of damage. And this Shadow Ball should do decent damage, though not as much as I'd like. Yeah. So, do I switch? I could switch into Dragapult. I guess the question is, if I save Goldango, what is the point? And I guess the point could be if they have Breloom in the back. So I'm gonna go Dragapult here. There's a chance they miss their Hydro Pump, but they probably won't. There's a chance they predict this. So my, my thought process here is even if they break my Sash, I'm still faster than them, yeah. And I resist this for what it's worth. Although Dragapult's not tanky really at all. So let's go ahead and Hex now. This should knock them out. Oh, I'm so dumb, everyone. Oh my god, I'm so dumb. I forgot about the booster energy. Wow, god, that's so dumb. Ugh, all right. Yeah, that was pointless. So I lost Dragapult for nothing at that point. That was so bad. God, that was so bad. That's so awful. So now... I probably just lose the whole battle, honestly. Yikes, that's such a rough start. Okay, redo. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go into Gyarados here. I think I have to Terrastalize. I'm still weak to it, but what else can I do at this point, you know? Um, I think Gyarados is like somewhat tanky enough that it should, it should live a freeze dry, unless they freeze me. It should live a freeze dry. I should get the citrus berry, but then they just go into whatever they want and just destroy me. And because their team is so fast, like they're likely to be able to just kind of finish off my team. So I have to go for this in order to survive. Cause if I don't, I believe I'm four times a week to freeze dry because freeze dry is super effective against water types. And then it's also super effective against flying, right? So yeah, we get the, we get the citrus. We are somewhat tanky. Probably not tanky enough though, but we should knock them out here. And then like I said, they could just go into whatever they want and just kill me. <laughs> so what an awful start for me. Um, yeah, that was so bad. I forgot about the booster energy. I need to pay more attention to that. So the, the right play there was probably to keep Goldango in and just hope for the best that they miss. Actually, this is an interesting switch from them unless they're like Terra Blast, Terra Electric, or they have Thunder Punch or Ice Punch for that matter. But I guess Surging Strikes probably kills me here also, but maybe not. Probably, though. If I had gotten the Intimidate on them, then then this would matter, but yeah. If they knock me out here, then I lose because there's no way Goldango survives. But anyways, my, my correct play... Yeah, I'm dead. <laughs> my correct play there was to stay in against... Or stay in with Goldango against the Iron Bundle. And then I... Pr probably die, but if I don't, like if they miss the Hydro Pump by some miracle, then I knock them out, which is perfect. Um, but if I do get knocked out, then I can go into Dragapult and then survive a hit because of Focus Sash and then knock them out with Hex. And then they go into something that is presumably slower than than uh, Dragapult. Like, presumably, they maybe they go into this thing, into Urshifu. And they maybe Aqua Jet, so I switch into Gyarados, get the Intimidate on them, and then at that point I have, I'm like, I'm, I'm in a really good spot at that point because I can um, set maybe set up a Dragon Dance if I'm feeling greedy and stuff, and you know, at that point if they have like Fluttermane in the back, Drag Dragapult's good against them, but yeah, so really, really awkward situation there on my part, and I, let's talk, so I'm gonna keep that battle in even though it was a really bad battle on my part because I just made that extreme misplay. But let's talk about kind of like what I what I did. I think where I went wrong was in the team preview. I mean, 
to be fair, Ting Lu is a common lead. Maybe Breloom is not like that common as a lead. Like I just personally, when I use Breloom, I typically lead with it because it has Focus Ash and Spore. So maybe I'm just like overvaluing Breloom as a potential lead. Iron Bundle is also a Pokemon that can lead pretty commonly though. So I should have, I, I did think about it in my mind. I just didn't really say anything just because I was so focused on Ting Lu and Breloom as the possible leads, which is why I brought Gyarados, which is funny because I my opponent probably just 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 read me like they probably said oh he's gonna see ting lu and breloom and he's gonna lead gyarados so i'm gonna lead iron bundle right so they counter led me they counter counter led me so that's something i need to get better at is is the team preview um i should have really thought about the possibility of them leading with with bundle and led with something else but honestly my team might not be designed for that so let's get another game going here yeah, so I feel like there's some redundance between like Gyarados and Dragonite and then like Goldango and, and maybe Corviknight. So I need to kind of iron out those redundancies and bring probably change Pokemon on this team to fill out those weaknesses. So that's something I need to I need to work on. Anyways, with that being said, my opponent has Rillaboom, which is a little scary because it now has Grassy Glide again with the Grassy Terrain. However, Grassy Glide is significantly nerfed. <laughs> it's really sad. I believe it was 80 base power in Sword and Shield, and now it's 55 base power. So it's still a solid move, but sadly, it is not as strong. But with that being said, how is the Dragapult lead? I think Dragapult is pretty solid here as a lead, actually. It's actually decent against everything they have. Now, one Pokemon I'm going to be really worried about and that I'm really going to want to keep my eye on is that Cresselia. And actually, I actually don't know what I do against Cresselia. I don't like that at all. I think I have to go like Goldango and then like set up a few nasty plots. But the problem with that is they're going to be setting up Calm Mind. Oh, I hate, I hate Cresselia so much. Um, oh, I got to hurry. <laughs> so we've got Dragapult. I think I need Goldengo for the potential of Cres Cresselia. And then I'm going to want one of these guys. And it's going to be Gyarados. It's going to be May. Gyarados is like good, it's good against their Water Ogre Pond and it's okay against uh, Rillaboom, I guess. I guess if I can Terrastalize, it's pretty decent. I don't know. They have too many threats here. <laughs> if they brought Cresselia at all, I kind of feel like I'm in a really rough spot. But they lead Goldango, which is a really interesting lead. I lead with my Ghost type, so... Yeah, Goldango's are an interesting lead, like I said. I think I just need to Hex. I just need to get off as much damage as possible. I don't... I, I could switch. Maybe I should have switched, but... I just don't want, you know, my Goldango to take too much damage. So they Shadow Ball, go to my Sash. And if they're choice, then this is really good for me because they're forced to switch or die. If they're, I guess they could terrestrialize. That would be kind of a worst case scenario. But if they terrestrialize, that might help me against their future Pokemon, right? Yeah. So I, I think that tells me that they're choice. So they go into this thing, which honestly should take pretty good damage from Hex anyway. It doesn't. It absolutely doesn't. And then this thing, I believe, gets Shadow Shadow Sneak. The funny thing about Iron Valiant is it's like a mixed attacker. It has a really high attack stat and then like a decently high special attack. But I do believe people typically run it as a special attacker. So I'm actually going to go into Gyarados here. It's one of those Pokemon that has... All, it, it's really versatile. It has a lot of options. But it kind of has that four move slot syndrome where you want to you wanna give it so many different moves but it only has four move slots so they do go the shadow sneak which is great for me because i take that really well um i think i just dragon dance here if they're purely physical um if they're purely physical then they're probably going to switch because they are intimidated now and if they have some special moves i should still be able to take them decently like probably not well to be honest but at least survive like a moon blast they could also have a... They could have Destiny Bond. Like I said, I'll say this again, as long as they did not bring Cresselia, they go Knock Off, which is actually pretty good for them because they get my Citrus Berry, so that's going to mean that we actually just don't have any recovery anymore. But after this Dragon Dance, I should be faster than them. And I don't think I'm going to push my luck here. I'm just going to Waterfall. 
I could Terra, but I'm, I'm just hesitant to Terra this early into the battle because we have Goldango in the back, who of course is really slow and has like a really distinct typing where it's weak to like, you know, Ghost and, oh man, Ghost and Ground. And so, oh wow, we get the flinch, that's awesome. And so like the potential to Terrastalize Goldango later is better for us. So this ends up working out that we didn't, I mean, I guess it kind of, doesn't. I was gonna say it ends up working out that we didn't Terrastalize because we get the flinch anyway. However, they have Shadow Sneak and they get a crit, so they still get some extra damage on us before going down. So that's a little annoying, but either way, um, we are in a good spot here. We have three Pokemon left and my opponent only has two. They kind of only have one and a half because their Goldango is at half health. They go back into Goldango and honestly, I think I'm just gonna Waterfall here. I think it's pretty likely that they Terrastalize. I mean, I think the Earthquake is obvious, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna Waterfall. If they Terrastalize, okay, they ooh, they're faster. Oh, so their choice Scarfed. Their choice Scarfed. Okay, that's good information. However, we are certain that Dragapult is faster than they are. So we are, of course, just gonna click Hex here. Unless it's a speed tie, which it could be, but that sucks. Yeah, I should have I should have considered the possibility that their choice scarf, but I got a little bit complacent there. I was like, oh well, Dragapult outsped them, so of course Dragapult, the fastest Pokemon in the meta, outsped them, so of course they're not choice scarf. <laughs> Even though I did correctly identify that they are choice. Okay, so this is good for us though, because and this is why I'm really glad I kept Dragapult alive even at 1 HP, just because it's so fast. It means that if they switch here, we are gonna be faster than whatever they go into. And this could be really good for us. It's Rillaboom, okay. Okay. Huh. So that we get a little bit of damage here. Maybe see if they're gonna be Assault Vest. I'm not sure if that's Assault Vest damage. We get a little bit of recovery, which I don't think matters. We could still win this battle if we, like if we get knocked out here and we go into Goldango after that, like, if we Terrastalize, we might be able to survive a Shadow Ball from their Goldango. Honestly, I don't think so, though. I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna switch here. I I just... I think we need to preserve Dragapult for their, their Goldango. This is really risky, though. If they make this prediction and knock off, it's GG. Okay. I kind of feel like they, in some ways, should have just knocked off, right? But, hey, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna complain. <laughs> All right, so we Terrastalize here, and then we... Sorry if you can hear the plane in the background, by the way. Do we just Shadow Ball at that point? I think we have to Shadow Ball. I don't think we can stall out gra or, uh, grassy terrain. We just Shadow Ball here. Oh, they... <gasps> what? Oh, I think that tells me that they're choice. Wow, this is a crazy battle. The funny thing is, I mean, this is hindsight, but uh, now I'm wishing I didn't Terrastalize here because then, then like, if they go back into Rillaboom and, and they get locked into, um, they get locked into, like, a move that's not Grassy Glide, then I can go into Dragapult and Terrastalize and go for Draco, a Dra Dragon, Terra Dragon boosted Draco Meteor just to do more damage, but... I'm not even sure that would do like that much damage, but so we Terrastalize, we get their Goldango, which I think is great. And then they have to go back into Rillaboom. They cannot use a ground type move. Um, I resist their grass type stab. I resist any fighting type moves they have. I guess their best move here is knockoff. So I'm just gonna recover. Cause if they knock off, oh, they go ter Terrastalize, which is actually scary. Again, if I can saw out grassy terrain though, then Dragapult might be able to save this battle possibly. Your Terra, oh no way, your Terra Rock. Are you serious? Who would run Terra Rock Rillaboom? Okay, I'm faster, which is really good to know. Man, that's so crazy. Terra Rock. Terra Blast on a Terra Rock Rillaboom. I think I might live this, but probably not, to be honest. Are you serious? Oh my God, Terra Rock Rillaboom. Is that, like, should I have? Had that on my radar? I don't think Rillaboom's super common. Uh, what do we do here? I mean, we're d I'm pretty sure we lose now. I guess they are choice banded, so like it makes sense that we died there. 
If we Will-O-Wisp them, we're dead. If we Draco Meteor, I doubt we kill them because Hex didn't do that much damage. Although, Draco Meteor is like twice as powerful as Hex was, so we need a crit or something. Man, the, the funny thing is we should not have Terrastalized Goldango. I mean, they probably do have knockoff, so even if, so if we did not, uh, if they have knockoff, it kind of doesn't matter because they would have just used knockoff on Goldango, and we'd, pro we'd pretty much be in the same situation. But the only, the only difference is that we would be able to terrestrialize Dragapult here, and then we would have a Terra Dragon boosted Draco Meteor to go for, which does a lot of damage. Honestly, if we had terrestrialized there, we might have gotten the kill. Wow, Terra Rock... So let me think, Is does that make sense? I mean, it does, I think it, I guess it does make sense, right? Cause like flying is probably the, cause like, yeah, if you think about it, flying types resist grass, resist fighting, are immune to ground. Those are like three common uh, types, typings that Rillaboom has in its moves. And then, I mean, yeah, I mean, flying types aren't super common, but I guess honestly, a lot of Pokemon do go Terra flying, but it still just seems kind of weird to me. I'm just like greedy and I just want to go Terra Grass Rillaboom and just like spam like Woodhammer with Terra Grass, Grassy Terrain Rillaboom, but that's awkward. All right, so those were some rough battles today. Um, yeah, we, we got two awkward losses, but let's talk about the team. So in situations like this, like, um, you know, I've talked about, I, I still think this team is pretty good, though I do want to make some changes to it. You know, like I, I know that it, I, like, I'm inclined to want to post a lot of uh, videos of me winning, right? Like, obviously, especially if I built this team myself. But I think it's also useful, or it can be useful, to talk about how to keep getting better. So let's try to focus on that. Because this video was not, it did not go great for me, we can talk about how to improve this team. So I would love to hear your suggestions, because I don't consider myself to be a great battler. Um, or particularly, particularly, I don't consider myself to be a great team builder. I think I'm better at battling than I am at team building. So um, I would love some feedback and, and hear your thoughts about this. So let me know in the comments what you think about this team, in all honesty, and if there are suggestions you have to improve it, because I'm always looking to improve. So I'll probably do another video this week with this same exact team as well, um, just to keep, to keep going. Maybe I'll make some changes to it, but... Here is the team code if you would like to try it out for yourself. And as far as changes, I really like what I'm trying to do here with Dragapult. I, I really like that. Um, going with, you know, this Dragapult, the purpose of it, it's kind of like a support Dragapult. The main goal is to burn or paralyze common threats in the meta and then go into something else later and, and you know, take advantage of that situation. And I think, you know, Ursa Luna is really good here. Sadly, we didn't really get to show it off too much. Um, and then Goldango is also really good at that, even though that, that video was a little awkward for Goldango. Um, and then Dragon, or Gyarados, like I said, Gyarados and Dragonite, I think are just a little redundant together. And Corviknight and Goldango feel a little redundant, especially because I do think you always want a Pokemon that can help you against Gliscor. And Corviknight and Goldango both do that, but... We don't need both, and honestly, Corviknight's really good in certain situations, but I've found it to be really bad in other situations, so you really want some balance on your team with Corviknight. I think it's a decent pair with Ursaluna, but again, I, I just think I need to do some more digging with this team and just find ways to, to balance it out better. And I think something I'm missing here is speed, a little bit more speed. Um, there were too many situations where the fact that we were slower, it felt like that was very critical. Um, we have Dragapult, which again is super, super fast, but everything else we need a little bit of help with the speed. So yeah, we either, I, I guess we either need more bulk or more speed. We shouldn't have like all these Pokemon that are like kind of in between, but let me know in the comments what you thought about the team. And if you want to try it out yourself, uh, I'll try to do more featuring of Ursaluna next video because Ursaluna is really good in my testing. It's been very, very good. So sadly, we didn't really get a chance to show it off here, but that's the team for you had a lot of fun still with these videos and it's a good learning experience so thank you very much for watching i do appreciate it please leave a like and subscribe for more pokemon scarlet and violet videos and i hope you have a wonderful day i'll see you very soon